Melbourne City FC. So please welcome Mr. Patrick Stobel, head coach, and Scott Jamison, team captain. So let's we'll start with the first question. How do you feel tomorrow, coach? Yeah, um, we're all okay. Um, you know, we've trained a couple of days now, so um, it's been good. You know, we have a, we've been welcomed by the, the, the you know, the, the Thai people here, which is fantastic. And again, we're, we're very lucky to be um, in the country and then uh, to be welcomed so much. So, you know, we thank you guys. But look, the, the team have been training really well. Um, and, you know, we prepare for tomorrow's game. Okay, so the next question for the player, Mr. Scott. Um, to face the host B team tomorrow, uh, how do you prepare and how ready are you? Yeah, it's exciting. We, uh, we are fully aware of, of the challenge that is uh, Patton, but um, you know we have confidence in, in what we can do. Um, they will have the support of the home crowd, which uh, we are aware of, but um, you know, we come in here knowing that uh, we uh, we have earned the opportunity to play in this prestigious tournament and, and we're excited. So um, we have done our homework on, on them. Um, more so we focus on ourselves to, to make sure that the challenge that we're up against, we're ready for. Thank you. Next question to you, AFC. Call my hand on AFC. Questions for you, Patrick. Uh, this has been a long time coming for the Melbourne City playing in Champions League, you know, one of the best teams in Australia for quite a while, but just for whatever reason, it's taken until now to get here. But you arrived in, uh, excluding last weekend, in very good form, top of the league. So how much of a milestone is it for the club to be at this stage? And how well prepared do you feel to do well here? Yeah, look, I think we've waited three years. Um, obviously, the pandemic hasn't helped. and. So look, like you said, I think we've earned the, the opportunity. Um, it's great to be here. Um, you know, it, it's the unknown for us, you know. So look, time will tell tomorrow. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll concentrate on ourselves and what we need to do and, you know, we'll try and put a good performance in, you know, for tomorrow. You've got a long history in this competition going all the way back to that run to the final with LA United in 2008. Um, does that experience sort of come into your mind now? As Because you, you're with a bunch of guys, most of whom have not played in this competition before, um, but you have, and, and you've got sort of an experience of going all the way to the final, which you know not many Australian teams have done. So how do you sort of reflect on that so, for, so long ago, and how is it going to be of any use to you going into this competition? I was a young boy at that time, so you know, everything that happened was a, a whirlwind. Um, but um, you know, it's fantastic memories. It was disappointing to, to lose the final against Gamba, but you know the opportunity to you know, to to beat you know, um, you know certain teams like Kohan. Uh, we went to Bunyakor and, and beat them, and yeah, the experience. I don't know if I can draw too much on that because it was such a long time ago. But you know, I think for our group, you know, something that's you know, been a, an emphasis on for us for the last three years has been focusing on ourselves and yeah it's the unknown we, we don't know too much about um, I guess this new challenge but you know one thing's for sure we, we do our preparation we do our due diligence and then the big thing is for us you know making sure that you know, we, we, we perform to the best of our ability so if anything I, if, if I can remember anything you know during the, uh, the run from Adelaide it was it was always about making sure you prepared well um, and, and use the information that the coaching staff gave you on the opposition teams because you know a lot of our players haven't seen the opposition teams that have come up against so that's really important but um, it was all a whirlwind yeah it was only 18, 19 and um, living the dream so um, the plan is to do that again but go one step further but you know firstly it's, it's about these, uh, these three opponents in our group. Patrick, we've seen a lot of the top Australian teams over the years, thinking about uh, what's the call with Brisbane Roar or Sydney FC, you know, sort of dominate the A-League but struggle to make the transition into the ACL. Um, is there anything that you've been able to learn from that? And are there any changes that you're making in this competition or is it just about executing what you do at this level? Yeah, look, it's unknown for me as well. Um, but for me, it's about what we want to do, and, you know, and, and the processes that we follow. Um, I was uh, I was abroad. I was overseas when obviously all this sort of 
um, this competition have been playing. So I didn't know too much. Um, but now uh, as a coach, it's, you know, it's a place where we, we want to be. It's a, it's a tournament where our club wants to be um, and our players want to be. We want to test ourselves with the best. Um, and there's a lot of good teams out there, you know. But, you know, for us, it's, you know, how can we be the best that we can um, in, a, in, a, in a very good competition? Um, you know, I haven't spoken to, to too many people about the actual competition itself. Um, but for me, it's just focusing on our team and our processes and, and how we go about that. Scott, uh, sort of, yeah. Scott um, you've had this sort of bubble experience in the A-League before during COVID, but this is a bit different. Um, you know, we're at a different stage of the pandemic and it's in a different country. So is it sort of feel like you're back in that situation again or are there differences in what it was like playing in that A-League bubble sort of a couple of years ago? Yeah, no, you're correct. It's, um, it's exactly like that, albeit we're in a hotel, uh, but it is still a bubble. You know, we came from Australia where um, you know, COVID was still there, but there was a lot more relaxed rules as such and, and we're living, I guess, uh, as normal as can be, whereas you know, coming here and um, you know, we're, we're in a hotel uh, confined to, to our own rooms and you know, we're aware of, of COVID um, coming off the plane and everything like that. So yeah, we have experience in regards to you know, the bubble and, and, and what it uh, consists of and um, what it takes to, to try and be successful. So um, it's, a, it's another challenge on top of, you know, versing different opponents is, is the COVID challenge. So as players and as staff, you know, we try to be as diligent as possible. Um, it's the invisible virus, so we can't really see it, but we can do everything in our power to, to make sure we, we um, you know, we try and stay clear of it. Um, and that's the, the key. As I said, there's only there's two opponents, not just the opposition team, but there's obviously COVID too. Yeah, let's go back to you, Patrick. Just in terms of like a team news situation, uh, Berenguer was injured in the match last weekend, and there's a couple of others in that midfield area as well. Are you feeling that you're sort of well enough stopped in that particular area, especially considering it's six games in, I think, 15 days? Yeah, look, it's, you know, we've, we've lost some key players um, in key positions, but you know, it's a chance for other people, you know, um, to take the opportunity. And you know, we can't change that. Um, as you know, in the A-League, our squads uh, are a certain amount. And when you come to this competition, it's a bit different. So it's, a, it's just one of those things that, you know, we have to get on with. And